Shalom Arab Tov, good evening from Jerusalem, Israel. This is Lowell Joseph Gallen, founder of the Root and Branch Association Limited, established in New York State in 1981. I would like to welcome our viewers and listeners worldwide and our live Zoom studio audience to this evening's program in our Root and Branch Association Limited English Language Conference and Lecture Series broadcasting from Jerusalem, Israel, and now celebrating our first quarter century, first 25 years from January 1995 until 2020 today. Today is Wednesday, December 9th, 2020 in the Gregorian calendar and the, let me double check, 24th day of Kislev 5781 in the Israelite Hebrew calendar. We are broadcasting from the land of Israel, city of God, Jerusalem. Our speaker for this evening's program is actually our program chair, Dr. Les Glassman, who will speak about his work as Israeli stamp commissioner. And now I would, I would usually welcome the program chair to welcome the speaker, but in this case, the program chair is the speaker. So without further ado, I hand it over to Dr. Les Glassman. Okay, well, um, Lowell, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight on the Route and Branch. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I want to thank Larry for helping me with the technical side for getting um, these images out and for helping me actually put on the images. Without Larry, I, don't, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So I'm extremely grateful. And I want to thank you all for joining. So it is really a tremendous honor and a privilege to be here tonight. And I hope you find it uh, interesting. So stamps, um, you know, you hear the, everybody saying today stamps, well, it's a thing of the past. Um, what's the big deal about stamps? Nobody even knows what stamps are. And if you go and you ask children, if you know what a stamp is, they might stamp their feet, but very few people know, you know, what the stamp actually was or is. And when I grew up, my late father, Zekroni Bracha, um, was a tremendous stamp collector. He was a judge, a philatelic judge, and he instilled in um, my siblings, my two brothers and my sister and myself, a tremendous love for stamps. He would bring us um, packets of stamps and we were, we were so excited to receive these gifts. When we look at the different countries, you'd see countries, exotic places all over the world and we'd see themes like animals and space and um, it was just very exciting. And um, my dad took me to a few of his meetings and we were like the youngest and they had an auction there. And it was just, it was a different world. It was like a really a different world. And um, my late grandmother, Alava Shalom, she used to tell us about Lithuania. And she used to tell us that when, well, we always knew that when she was a young girl, they were very Zionistic, their family, and her parents decided that the mother and the children would go to, um, to the Holy Land. It was under the Turks before the British. Um, before the First World War, and the father, her father would stay behind in Lithuania and he would provide for the family. He would later join them. And they communicated via letters and he would send money also via the post. So um, it was intriguing to think that in those days they never had telephones, they never had, uh, the only way of communication was by letters and postcards. And um, that's how my late grandmother, actually, they arrived in, in Jaffa and they attended the Hebrew Gymnasium. And her father stayed behind in Mariupol in Lithuania and they would correspond. My grand would say that she would write the letters. And I actually have one over here. This is one of the many that we have, but this is with a stamp. And I don't know if you can all see, but um, they, they used every single space on this postcard because it was quite expensive with the stamp and sending it, but this is how they would communicate. So we grew up with that, and I grew up with my brothers and my sister and myself, with the tremendous uh, affinity to, to stamps. 
And then I started collecting and I started collecting the whole world. And then I just realized that I'll never be able to collect all the stamps in the world. So uh, I think my father mentioned to me, why don't you just specialize in one area? And I loved animals. I started collecting animals. And then I also realized, wow, there's so many different animals and so many different stamps of animals. So I narrowed it down to something which I don't think anybody had done before. I decided I'm going to collect dogs and cats. And I collected dogs and cats, any stamp which had a dog in it, a dog or a cat. So that's what I, it became my, I wouldn't say obsession, but I was very, very passionate about any stamp that had a dog or a cat on. And then I, my, my father explained to us how we should put in, write it up on pages, put the stamp in a little story about the dog um, or where it came from and which country. And then we entered little for children exhibitions where you'd put, um, say, 20 pages with your stamps on, you mount them, and you write a little story about, about the stamp or the dog. And I, I actually, I loved doing it. So I did that, and uh, we all got our little medals, and it was actually quite exciting. And then I got in the post, they asked me if I could represent South Africa in Rhodesia. In those days, it was Rhodesia, today it's Zimbabwe, in Salisbury, which my wife actually comes from Salisbury, well, today it's called Harare. And in 1972, I exhibited my dogs and cats in, in, in Salisbury. I sent it with a commissioner and they gave me this uh, medal, which I really treasure. This is going back from 1972 in, um, in Salisbury in, in Rhodesia. And um, that developed my, my real uh, love for philately. When I came on Opan in 1975, um, I stayed in Jerusalem for, for four months, I was 15 years old, and I started um, collecting a few of the postcards. And then I realized that a lot of the stamps of Jerusalem are similar to the postcards. So I did something else. I had the postcard and then I, uh, I got the stamp, which was similar to the postcard. And I made a collection of that. And then I just started developing a, a further interest in Jerusalem. And I started developing an interest in the postal history of Jerusalem uh, in the time of the British and in the Ottoman. And I just started a small collection on Jerusalem. And I exhibited, I made it into an exhibition and I exhibited it in London as, as a youth and then when, and in a few other countries. And then when we made Aliyah, my wife, myself and our two daughters, in, uh, it's now nearly 27 years ago, in 94, I asked if I could have the privilege to exhibit for Israel. And they allowed me, and I started exhibiting for Israel. And then what happened in 2010, there was an international exhibition in Johannesburg, in South Africa. And because I was South African, they said to me, would I like to be the Israeli commissioner to represent Israel in South Africa, where you take, what it means being a commission is you take collections from other exhibitors, people that also collect various different topics, it can be postal history, or it can be thematics, uh, or it can be um, aerophilately, many, many different topics on philately. And um, I said, I, it was such a great honor. I couldn't believe that they had asked me to do it, but I accepted. And uh, we had quite a few collections that I took with me. And uh, it's very interesting when you, when you go to a country and you take the collections, even though some of these collections are extremely valuable. The insurance company will only insure if the commissioner has it with him all the time on the plane. You can't put it in the hole. It's not insured. So there are all these collections. Thank God I was using Al Al. So I was very overweight, but they allowed me. And I put all the different, um, it's quite heavy because you're taking uh, frames where there's sometimes 80 pages of, for one collection. But we, we managed, it was a miracle that we managed. And I came to South Africa, I was in Johannesburg, and um, I represented Israel as a commissioner for the very first time. And there were countries like Pakistan were being represented there, and all different countries, India and uh, parts of Africa, and, and it was a world exhibition. And um, I wore my yarmulke, obviously, and what happened is that the Pakistani commissioner came up to me, knowing that I'm Jewish, and he said, how do I know what is halal? And having, been, having lived in South Africa, I go back there twice a year, 
I knew that on most of the food, they had the thin sign and the halal sign. So I bought him a packet of crisps and some chocolates, and I showed him this is a halal sign, this is a betting sign, and we became friendly. And then I saw that the Indian commissioner and the Pakistani commissioner weren't speaking to each other. So um, I went up to both of them, and I said, you know, you guys are very, you love cricket, right? Cricket in India and Pakistan is like the national sport, and they, their eyes lit up. And I said, I know about uh, Khan, and I know about Tenduka, and both have the most amazing teams, and then we all started speaking cricket. And then here's a picture, I'm just going to show you, because this isn't the topic of the talk, but this is a picture of the Pakistani on the, the right, I'm in the middle, and there's the Indian on the left. And they became best friends. And it's amazing, through just interacting with um, two commissions that really didn't speak to each other, they, they, they were coming from different worlds, kind of enemies, they became friends, and for the rest of the exhibition, they would um, eat together, and they, they became best of friends, and I think to this very day, they're still good friends. So that was a very, very successful exhibition in, in Johannesburg, and uh, the press were there, and they asked me to do an article, and then I was just very grateful that I was given that opportunity. I thought this is a once of time, because in many other commissioners. And then what happened in 2012, um, Indonesia was hosting a World uh, Stamp Championship. And um, they were gonna have a FIP conference. Now FIP is the Federation of International Philanthropy, where countries from all over the world, um, they, um, they have a, a day where they have like a symposium and they get together and they discuss all the various matters uh, pertaining to uh, the postal system and um, and how to regulate it and any problems and, and how to promote and everything to do with philanthropy. And the Indonesian, um, what was happening is that the Indonesian uh, Philatelic Federation, which falls under the, the post and telecommunication, which is a governmental um, department, part of the Indonesian government, sent out an invitation and one of the invitations came to Israel and Israel and Indonesia don't have any diplomatic relations so they knew the federation they knew that I have a South African passport you're allowed to have I have a joint Israeli and South African passport they asked me if my wife and I would be uh, keen to represent Israel in Indonesia as commissioner and what I didn't realize is this was possibly I don't know but it possibly was the very first time that Israel was actually invited um, officially because it was under the, the governmental department, Post and Telecommunications, to represent Israel in Indonesia. And I started communicating and I agreed. I was so, so I was overcome that they'd asked me. But the truth is, no one else could go because you aren't allowed to go in with the Israeli passport. And um, I started communicating with the Commissioner General in, in Jakarta. And it was wonderful. Post was coming up and down from Israel to Indonesia, and we we had emails going, and it was, it was really quite amazing. And then um, I obviously accepted, and I and I had a few collectors that gave me their exhibitions, and were very keen to exhibit in Indonesia. And um, we had this communication before it was going to happen in June. The exhibition was from the 18th to the 25th of June in 2012. And what was interesting that the exhibition coincided with the anniversary of the Bali, um, unfortunately, the Bali terrorist attack, where over 200 people were, were killed by the suicide bombers in Bali. And the Indonesian Federation were so pleased that Israel had accepted to attend, because a few of the European countries decided not to attend. Anyway, I just felt there was a, a very lovely correspondence and then they told us that before the we must arrive on, on uh, the Saturday before because they could go through the customs in Jakarta main airport. And then I realized I can't arrive on the Saturday. So I wrote to them and I said, you know, as a big favor, I just can't because of religious observance. Could I either come a day before or a day after um, as a big favor because I just can't come on the Saturday. And it was amazing. They were so uh, accommodating. They said, come on a Sunday, it's not a problem. 
they'll, they'll bring uh, other officials, but it was actually a big deal for them because they had to bring, open up uh, official officials in the customs department, but they did it for me. And the theme of that uh, exhibition in Jakarta was, um, it was initiated with the aim of fostering friendships and cooperation amongst philatelists worldwide. And, you know, I thought to myself, stamps know no boundaries. They cross oceans and seas throughout the world. But the theme of Indonesia was bridging the world of peace through stamps. And I really felt this bridge so personally because they really went out of the way to accommodate my wife and myself by allowing us to come on Sunday. So we went, there's now obviously no direct path between Israel and uh, Indonesia. So we went by Singapore. And in Singapore, we spent the Shabbos there. I thought, like, and we had arranged to go to the synagogue. They've got a beautiful synagogue of the Maganabot. And you can prepare, you can book your meals before. So we booked uh, the Friday night and the, the, the Shabbos lunch meal. And it was really lovely seeing the community in Singapore. And in the Shabbos lunch, what was interesting is a lot of the Israeli embassy staff and the ambassador they come to that lunch. It's a communal, you can feel the community uh, with the Israeli, um, it's the identification with Judaism, but it's a lovely atmosphere that the whole community, most people come, if you pay for your meal, if you don't pay for your meal, they're just happy to accommodate everybody. And we sit in there and then they hear, because we're speaking, they said, we are, we're going, and so we're heading out to, to Jakarta for the stamp exhibition. And then I think it was the ambassador or the vice ambassador who said, no, 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 we might land up like Rani Rad. He was the pilot that was shot down and they, they, they never found, unfortunately. So I was a little bit nervous because um, I've always worn my yarmulke since a very young age. So I decided, you know, I'll just wear a cap. So the day we arrived, I'm just going to now share on the screen. This was the, um, this was the World Stamp Championship. Um, as we arrived at the airport in Jakarta, I used my South African passport, um, but I represented Israel. And what was interesting, and I'll show you, um, I just, uh, yeah, what was interesting is on the bulletin, it was on the actual, um, yes, this was the, this was the actual bulletin that was sent to all the different commissioners and they all had it on the website. And if you look, um, I don't know if you can all see it, but on the third row, there's, there I am with the Israeli flag. It was amazing because on the official Indonesian post and telecommunication website, you have the Israeli flag. And then above me was the Iranian um, commission as well. So I was a little bit nervous. And then at the very bottom, um, it was from the UAE, from all the different countries, Kuwait, from all the different countries. But, um, you know, I, was, I, was, I couldn't believe that they put my name with the Israeli flag. Um, anyway, so uh, when we arrived at the airport, I'm just going to go over the... This was a sign that, that we came across. Death penalty for drug traffickers and in Indonesian law. I was a little bit, you know, it's not so, it's a little bit unwelcoming seeing the sign as you arrive at the airport. Uh, and I had my cap on and I had my South African passport and I tucked away my Israeli passport, but they knew that I was, you know, representing Israel, but I went in with the South African passport, which wasn't a problem. And when we came through, we met with the customs officials. They, they were really, really nice to us. Um, uh, they were very polite. And then we had a driver that took us to the main convention center where we stayed. Actually, in the convention center, that's where they had the non-aligned movement. It was the same hall and the same venue where the non-aligned movement used to have all their conventions. And while we were driving and I was speaking to the driver and he asked where I'm from and I told him I'm representing Israel. So I said, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and um, he started asking about Jerusalem and Israel and... Uh, so I thought, you know what, all my life I've worn a yamuka. I'm not going to go around with a cap. So I took off my cap and then I had my yamuka. And I didn't know what, what would be, but um, it actually turned out pretty good. So we arrive at the convention center and this is the welcoming committee. And everybody's smiling. There's my wife in the middle. Uh, there we are sitting and everybody, uh, it was so nice to go like this. It was, 
It was really, they made us extremely welcome. There was a welcoming committee. And this is just a video where you can see um, of the opening ceremony. Those were all the commissioners. It was a lot of press, as you can see. It was widely covered in the press. In um, the, the the mayor of, of Jakarta was present. Um, the governor of uh, that area where Jakarta is, and the head of the Indonesian Philatelic Federation. They had many speeches, both in Indonesian and in English. And it was really, it was, uh, it was actually very, very nice to, to, to be part of it. Uh, this was just, the, it, they gave us, a, they put on a lovely event. And this is authentic Indonesian dancers. This was very interesting. As you come into the exhibition hall, this is a, a collage made of stamps of President Sohato. He was uh, a very popular president in, uh, in Indonesia. And if you look very closely, it's all made out of Indonesian stamps. So it was actually quite unbelievable to see this. It was, it was really, really, really uh, lovely. Um, this is, as you can see, I'm, well, I was wearing my yamaka and uh, it says on my name, uh, Israel, and the picture. And I just became quite close, friendly with the um, with the officials. And they were very, they were, always came up to me and they said, how can we help? Is everything okay? It was, they were incredibly, incredibly um, polite and very, very helpful. This was at the opening ceremony. Here's my wife and uh, Indonesian, a little exotic, but they made the most magnificent opening ceremony. And here I am meeting with the, today we have diplomatic relations, which is a, a miracle in itself. But this is 2012, eight years ago. He was the commissioner from Bahrain. And uh, we had this, this, he actually got it extremely well. This was a philatelist who wasn't a commissioner, but he goes to all the exhibitions and he was from Saudi Arabia. And although um, he didn't speak much English, but we had a common interest in stamps and uh, it was just so nice that we, um, we connected. This was a very interesting picture. My wife and I met the Egyptian. This was the Egyptian judge and his wife. And I told the Egyptian judge, that I had spent on my way to South Africa, I would stop over often. I, I would be in, I would buy a, it was actually, I didn't tell him this, but it was the cheapest flight to go to South Africa via Air Egypt. And I spent sometimes a day or two in Cairo. I once went to Alexandria and I mentioned to him the different shows that I went to in old Cairo and in, in Alexandria, which is an amazing show. It's got actually 90 separate tours there in Alexandria. It's a very interesting shul, the one in Alexandria, because on the same street you have a mosque, a church, and a shul. And for 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 decades, the the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims lived in such harmony in Alexandria and in Cairo, in downtown Cairo. They've got a synagogue today, um, Sharia Shemaim. Today it's actually closed and they have guards, even though it's not really used. But I was very fortunate to go into that synagogue. But we spoke. My wife had been um, when she was um, before I met her. 
She went on a tour of Egypt and she went down to Abu Simbel. So we had a lot in common and we we're speaking about so many different topics. Now, you remember I showed you the, um, the commissioner from South Africa, uh, the Indian commissioner who was in South Africa. So here he was again, the Indian commissioner in Jakarta and in the middle was somebody from Mongolia. And I'd never really ever met anybody before from Mongolia. Uh, he didn't say a word of English, but we, we still c connected in such a lovely way. Okay, this is... Okay, so what happened is that they gave us one part of a day free and we got a taxi and I'd heard that in Jakarta, there are not many tourists that go to Jakarta. It's very industrialized. It, I think 12 million people in 2012. Today, there must be maybe 14, 15 million people. But they've got this magnificent tower it's called Monas Tower. And we decided, I love going up tall buildings. I just have a, a fascination because you can see the whole city. And I thought, let's just go. So we, out of the hotel, we went, uh, we, we got a taxi and I said, could you take us to the Manus Tower? And um, here we were at this tower and these girls were so, they looked at us as being very different because not too many tourists go there. It's only Indonesians really. And we saw them, it was so nice. As, but they were so friendly as you saw in, the, in that video. Um, the exhibition was, was really wonderful. And um, what had happened is on the last day of that exhibition, there was a, the FIP, that's the Federation International of Philately, had their conference. And um, I was representing Israel there. And they, each country has a representative and you vote and you have the, um, this conference, which is actually very important because it determines how philately and how the postal system is going to work in the, the next few years. So I'm going to show you the opening of the FIP conference. Uh, go over here, sorry. We are very keen to meet you wherever possible. Because I believe in the off-way traffic that we can solve a lot of things. Like this morning, my 10 minutes discussion with our new Portuguese fisherman, the shopper, we saw a lot of doubts in our mind, although I've been for so many years. Right, thank you, shopper. And uh, we take the effort for example. Okay, I don't know if you saw, but it was very interesting. I don't know what to expect. I'd never been to one of these FIP conferences before. They have them every four years. It's like a mini United Nations, but in a good way. And um, I was seated, the, um, the delegate from um, Ireland didn't come, but I was seated next to the Iranian commissioner. And it was phenomenal because before we had arrived, we, I just didn't know how I was going to react. You know, the tensions between, and even to this very day, between Iran and Israel were very, very tense. And what had happened is in the mornings, um, my wife and I would go to the breakfast and we'd have the coffee and they had fruit. So the Iranian commissioner's daughter came up to us in the hotel one breakfast morning and she said to us, how are you keeping kosher in Jakarta? And she was so nice and we couldn't believe that she, she made the first step. And we just told her that we brought our own provisions and, um, and you know, and, and we eat fruit and, and the coffee and it's fine and it's not, it's not a big deal. But that broke the ice and it was amazing because we spent the whole day together. I was, the, the person on my other side was from Japan and he really didn't speak a word of English. So the Iranian commissioner knew English pretty well and we just spoke and it was amazing how we really we just connected so so beautifully i think the year before or even in the beginning of 2012 uh iran won the best 
film in the foreign film for the Oscars. And I actually saw that film. And I told him I saw the film on Iran. And we just, we really got on very, very nicely. Um, so this was the picture that somebody took where it said Iran, Israel, and Japan. And, um, and you can see all the different countries behind. And looking at it, it was quite a big deal that Israel and Iran were sitting next to each other. But in, in the philatelic world, it was taken as, as for granted. You know, you, you all have enough philately and it's a, you, you, you believe in, you, you accept each other, you have it's religion and culture and you are, are accepting of different, um, of all different people and you just have the same passion for stamps and for philately. So, but it was really, really quite incredible spending the day with, with him. And here we had a picture where we were shaking hands and he's got his name tag saying Iran and mine with Israel. And these two pictures were actually quite significant because when I came back from, from uh, the exhibition, um, I kept these pictures a little bit private and um, there were magazines like our Irates that wanted these pictures. So uh, I'm just gonna stop it for a second. So what happened is that they came to my home and they heard that I was in Indonesia and they said, can they just do an interview with me? So um, I said, with pleasure. And they saw the pictures that I had, but I said, please, you can't use these pictures because I didn't do it for ulterior motives. And um, if here in Israel, it would go down very well, but in, in Iran, uh, it could be pretty, pretty uh, dangerous. And we see it, it's actually happened since then. Uh, I think the Miss World was with, with Miss Lebanon having a picture and she was ostracized. And uh, Omar Adam was with an Egyptian singer and he got tremendous, they wanted to boycott the Egyptian singer for having had a picture with Omar Adam. So I just didn't want to cause any problems. And we took these pictures in good faith. So I said to the, uh, they came, the journalist from Harris, I said, no, no, please, you can't use these pictures and they respected it. So this is just a short video that I didn't even know they were doing this video. They were just interviewing me and they asked me just to speak into a recorder and I did. So I'm just gonna play it for you. Dr. Lise Glassman, um, I live in Jerusalem. I've been collecting stamps from a very young age. I was very fortunate to be the Israeli commissioner in Jakarta, Indonesia for a World Stamp Championship exhibition. The theme was bridging the world of peace through stamps and by officially inviting Israel to participate, I think it was very significant because basically the two countries, Indonesia, which has the most, it's the most populous Muslim country in the world with over 250 million Muslims, uh, has no diplomatic relations with Israel. When we arrived, we were extremely warmly received. Most Indonesians had never met an Israeli before, let alone anyone wearing a yarmulke, and the response was extremely positive. I mentioned us from Israel. Um, people were very, very uh, interested to know more about the country. My collection is Mozambique and Mozambique Company. It's not the rarity of the stamps, it's just the display that I've done a lot of research on it. Mozambique Company was an area inside Mozambique that was semi independent. It was a company that lasted for nearly 50 years that had a bit of independence. And one of the features of the independence is they issued their own stamps separate to Mozambique. Just giving a little school kid a envelope coming from Israel with a stamp of Israel, with a message from Israel, they received it so warmly. They were so happy to, to have it in their possession that I gave it as a gift. Um, I'll remember that forever. It was really wonderful. It broke down all barriers. The message of peace through stamps, it really does work. Just as a stamp knows no boundaries, so I think when you connect with people, when you have similar ideals and when you just look at each other as individuals, it's, it's just wonderful to see that you really are part of a family of nations. Okay, so I was, I was amazed because I know that they do this and Iris actually put it on their website and um, I was, it, was, it was really nice of them to do this. Um, but. For me, and I think one of the most incredible things about this, um, what I did is by giving the kids, um, they knew, I gave them first aid covers 
the stamps from Israel and the happiness when they received it, the joy that I was giving them a gift from Israel, you know, it was something that it was like I gave them gold. It really was. And um, that was really, it was really wonderful to see that. In all the time I was there, and all the people that I spoke to, and I'd taken a lot of first aid covers and a lot of stamps to give people from Israel, I never had one person that said, no, I don't want it, or um, I can't accept this from Israel. So that was an incredible um, positive uh, experience that I had. So there were quite a few, um, because I, my wife and I really, basically, I think we were the first, I could be wrong, but we didn't know. I, I tried to look it up and I think we possibly could have been the first uh, Israeli official delegation to be in Indonesia. So the Times of Israel, um, they did an article um, about um, um, our trip to Indonesia, but without the pictures of the Iranian commissioner and me. And um, it also appeared in the, the Times of uh, Asia. They did this article as well. And through this article, the Times of Asia, um, I got a message that there is a, there's a Jew living in Indonesia that wants to make contact. And before I had left, I actually Googled, well, in those days, I didn't, there was Google, but, but I tried to investigate, is there a Jewish community? I know that it was once a Dutch um, colony, and are there any Jews living there? Is there any, any Kahila, any shuls around? And I found nothing. And I asked quite a few people, and people said, no, there aren't really any. There might be a handful of Jews, but they live secretively. Anyway, I, I got this message, and um, this is his name is Yaakov Baruch. He wrote to me and he said, um, he saw the article of mine in the Times of Asia, and he said he's always longed, he's never seen what it is, and he'd love to have an etrog. So, uh, and it was coming up for, um, for Sukkot. So, a very close friend of mine. He sells a program. So I asked him, please, can I get one? It was a, maybe about a month and a half before a Sukkot. And I managed to get one and I wrapped it up and I put it in a parcel and I actually sent it to Indonesia. And I sent it to him. Unfortunately, it arrived a day after Sukkot. But it was the first time he had ever seen an etrog and smelt an etrog. And then it was a, a quite interesting. I asked a few Rabonin because he asked me, what can he do with it? And it's amazing how there are, but in, it wasn't the first time this question has been asked. Can you plant it? Can you use it for the next year? Can you put it in a jug where you um, light a match and then you close it so it's airtight? Anyway, I think he did plant it eventually. But this is Yaakov Baruch, and he came to Israel. And um, this we met and we communicated. And I'm going to show you a video that we made. He wanted to do an interview but he wanted to make it special. He arrived very late. I think I came to fetch him at 12. I met him in Yerushalayim. And then we decided the best place to go is the Kotel. So here's the interview at the Kotel. Shalom. My name is Yakov Baruch. Uh, I was born in Jakarta, Indonesia. And uh, I was born into a half Indonesian and half Dutch uh, family. And then, uh, since I was a kid, I didn't know anything about Judaism, about Jewish life, until my grandmother revealed about uh, her background on time when I was in high school, that uh, she, she is Jewish. And then from that time, I tried to find uh, my spiritual life, my spiritual journey to Judaism, and... Jacob, can I ask you on, on this point, how old were you when your, your grandmother revealed that, uh, that she was Jewish? How, do you remember how old you were? Uh, I was around 17 at that time, yeah, 17 years old. And what religion were you practicing? I was uh, raised in the Christian family. So, uh, but it's uh, like the traditional Christian, so it's not really, uh, not really religious, but like, uh, I know that my family is uh, half Indonesian, half Dutch, and they practice some Christian, 
the other part of family practice Catholic and some is not even go to church. Was your father a Christian? Uh, yes. Okay, and then he revealed more. There is part in the family also, I don't want to say it on air, but uh, there's somebody who's not Christian and not Jewish as well. So um, he was scared that um, if he says it, his life might be in danger. And what's happened is he allowed me to put this video, the whole interview on YouTube. And the amount of comments that I've had and the views, it's been remarkable. Most of the comments are Indonesian, so I really don't really know what they're saying. But Yaakov and I developed quite a lovely um, connection. He once came with his wife and they came to our home for dinner. And he's the only religious Indonesian, uh, Jewish Indonesian. And um, it's, it's phenomenal. So this was one of the, from him reading an article about that exhibition, um, and we in touch with each other on Facebook a lot and on WhatsApp. And um, he just opened up, he stays in a place called Manago, and they just built a shul. At one time, the shul was actually destroyed, and they've just rebuilt the shul now. So this was something actually quite, quite unbelievable. And I developed a very close friendship, which we had to this very day. Okay, now this is a very interesting photo. Um, in 2013, a year later, I'm just gonna, in 2013, yeah, this is a picture I'm just going to show you. It's got the Iranian, the Egyptian, and the Turkish commissioner. And I just want to go on. So in 2000, and after the exhibition in 2012, um, a few months later, um, I actually got an email from very close friends that my wife and I had made, a commissioner from Australia, actually the judge from Australia. Both him and his wife were judges. Um, he's Jewish and his wife's Indonesian and they got married and we just, we, you know, everybody actually got on so nicely with each other. And we, we corresponded and we sent emails and we always would wish each other uh, on, on Christmas or Hanukkah that we'd, we'd, we'd uh, correspond. So I got an email once where they told me that the Iranian commissioner had passed away. And uh, I had the Iranian commissioner's uh, family the email. So I wrote them an email. And in those days, it was, I was using NetVision, which I still have. So netvision.net.il, I sent an email to Tehran. And uh, I wished them a long life. And I said, you know, my sincere condolences. I had such a lovely uh, connection with your dear late father. And may his memory be for eternal blessing. And the son replied to me. And he was very overcome that I had sent this email. And he said he'd love to meet. And he said he's going to be the commissioner in Melbourne the following year. And I wasn't really supposed to go to that exhibition because there was another exhibitor. But unfortunately, he um, broke up with his girlfriend. There were many exhibits that he had to take. And he had to carry them, um, he had to carry them by hand. So he couldn't single-handedly do it. So they asked me if I would be prepared to do it. And my wife, as a high school teacher, she couldn't come. But my daughter had just finished the army. And uh, I asked her, Sharon, and then Sharon, if she could join me. And she was only too happy to join. And um, I accepted. So I went to Melbourne. And that's the previous picture. I'll show it. So in Melbourne, I actually met with... Um, with the son and from the first moment that we met we had coffee together we developed a very very close uh, connection and the egyptian commissioner what a wonderful person and the turkish one as well the turkish commissioner actually happened to be jewish and we were in east melbourne by the main exhibition um, it's a hundred year old building it's a national heritage site and there was a show the east melbourne show which it's not really in the Jewish community, it's part of the east part of the town. And I met the rabbi, Rabbi Gutnik, a wonderful person. And I actually schlepped the Iranian, the uh, Turkish commissioner to come with me to show because it fell over Shavuot. And we just made the minion. It was incredible. We just had 10, 10 men in the show and he helped make that minion. Anyway, so that was really, really lovely. And the Iranian commissioner, who was in that previous picture, he gave me one of the most prized gifts that I've ever received. 
and this is the the book. It's the stamps of Israel in Parsi. So here you see the stamps of Israel with the Doivri, and it's got Hebrew and Farsi. And it was actually quite, it's, I value this book. Um, on the one side it's in Hebrew, and the other side it's in Farsi. And it was, it was printed in Tehran. And he gave this to me as a gift. And obviously I gave him gifts from Israel as well, but this is something that I will always treasure. Um, it was really, really, really special. And I remember that my, uh, my uncle, um, he lived in Israel and their, their daughter and her family were sent, I think it was Solal Bane in the 70s. A lot of Israelis, this is before the Shah was deposed, had um, a lot of Israelis would go to, to Iran to work on different business deals. So this was a letter that they had sent from Iran to South Africa to another to uncle of ours. And um, they would always tell me how wonderful it was in Iran in the 70s before the show was deposed and the Ayatollahs took over. But um, when you meet the actual, like we met the daughter and we met the father and I met the son now, you just realize that they are such lovely people. And, you know, it's such a pity that you have uh, so-called enemies when the actual people don't want to be. They just want to live in peace and they have nothing against, you know, the average person has nothing against Israelis and we have nothing against Iranians. It's just such a pity about the, the leadership, which it's a big pity and please God it will be resolved and uh, we hope that there will be peace between the nations. Anyway, so um, that was Jakarta. And I thought, well, that's it from Indonesia. I had the most amazing experience. And um, what happened is four years later, again, there was going to be an exhibition in Bandung. Bandung is in um, West Java. And they asked if Israel can, um, can be represented there and if we can attend. So this was the, another World Stamp exhibition in 2017. And um, I was only to, I was so blessed, uh, my wife and I, we felt, wow, this is such, such a lovely uh, opportunity to go. And my wife had to ask permission from the school, from the, if they would uh, you know, give her time off to, to represent Israel with me in Indonesia. And this was going to be in Bandung, which is the third largest city in Indonesia. And all I'd heard about and doing really is that it's very close to the volcanoes. So we actually went to visit a volcano. Now this is the opening ceremony of the Bandung uh, exhibition. See, it was very, very well uh, attended. Um, many people, many of the uh, local um, population attended the exhibition. It had tremendous coverage in the press and TV. And um, it was just such a wonderful atmosphere as well. This was um, in one of, the, uh, one of the evenings they arranged for us at the governor's house.
And, and this was the start. Thank you. You all worked so hard, and we really so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shalom. It was amazing that they said shalom to me. It was really, and I went with my kippah, and, and it was, there were no barriers. It was, it was just something very, 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 very unique. Okay, it's Jerusalem of Gold, and it's just been a wonderful exhibition, Ken Bandung. Shalom from Israel. <laughs> and you know what this is? <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. It's been wonderful. So in the background, you can see those are the frames where people put up from all the different countries, the different exhibitions. And they judged. They have judges that come as well. And you can get gold, vermel, silver, uh, bronze, all different, different medals. And they have a Palmares night where they hand out the awards. And people really, um, it's a big thing to get a gold for your country or... Um, and it's judged by international jury that's represented from even the jury. You have people from South America, from Europe, from Asia, um, all judging and um, they're very knowledgeable in the different topics that they judge as well. Thanks so much. Enjoy the exhibition. Yeah. Okay, and this is just a little souvenir from Israel. Okay. Thank you for this. And it's from Jerusalem. Wow. It's, also, it's all from Jerusalem. Okay, enjoy the exhibition, guys. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Yeah, thank you, sir. Not at all. Bye. Yeah. How do you know... Uh, Shalom. Yeah. Uh, I'm watching in TV such as National Geography oh, okay. or Discovery Channel. Wow, okay. So I hope you enjoyed it. So, uh, Tadaraba. Oh, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And Shalom is hello and goodbye and peace. We all pray for life and peace. And you must one day come and visit Israel. It's very special. Okay, all the very best. And it's so nice meeting you all. And I hope you enjoy it. And enjoy the stamp exhibition. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Shalom. Shalom. I forgot to mention in the um, in Jakarta in 2012 it also coincided with the European Football Championship and um, we had the TV on in most places showing the, the soccer games for the European qualifiers and when I was speaking to a lot of the different commissioners and judges and when we were all um, socializing i actually mentioned to them that do you know and i asked them do you know that in the israeli soccer team at least a third of the players are muslim and they it was as if i they couldn't believe what i was saying i said wali badir who is uh, he's actually the captain of hapol tel aviv and he's one of the top uh, players and scorers for israel and you know when they heard that because it's never in the press it came as such a surprise. They had no idea whatsoever. All they get is the very biased media. And here for the first time, they're hearing something positive about Israel. It was really, it was really, really um, lovely to see their, their reactions. And you can see this young boy from on the internet. He knew Shalom. He came up to me. And they were very happy that our, our video, no one ever said to me, please, I don't want to appear in your video or um, I don't want to speak about Israel or anything. Um, it, was, it was really, really, uh, very, very unique. This is Bobby from uh, Bali. Yeah. And uh, you were singing. Uh, How do you sing it? <laughs> Beautiful, thank you so much for being ready. Tadaraba, thank you very much. Shalom from Israel, wow.
So that for me was kind of the ultimate. We were having breakfast or having coffee, my wife and I, coffee and some fruit or whatever we were having there. And in the background, I don't know if you saw, there were a lot of people walking. One was from Kuwait, the other one was the Egyptian judge, the other one was from uh, the UAE. They were all walking in, in the background. And here you had somebody who was from Bali, and he came up to me and he says, Shalom. And, and I said, wow, how do you know Shalom? And he said, I, I, I even know uh, a Hebrew song. I said, you mind singing for me? And he started singing. It was just unbelievable to hear to hear Kinei Matovu being sung in Bandung. It was, I never ever dreamt that I would ever hear, you know, him singing such a song. It was something, you know, it, it, was, it was so beautiful to hear. And, and he sings it with such a passion. It, it was, there are no words, there really are no words. So here is a youngster that actually exhibited and he worked for the exhibition. I know. What do you know? A lot. Like what? Can you show one? Show one? How fun are you? How does it go? Wow, wow that's amazing. Yeah, and then what else? What other song? Amazing! Wow! 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 So that really was uh, unbe uh, unbelievable that in the middle of this exhibition, and you can see the stands in the background, where you had the different philatelic uh, bureaus, there was, then you have also not only exhibition, you have stamp dealers that come in countries that sell their stamps and they promote and they showcase what each country has. And here he's singing um, Havana Gila and Avenu Shalom. It was something absolutely remarkable so this um, is an Israeli stamp and uh, I just want to wish you all um, I just want to sh play something before I, I end but this is um, a beautiful stamps you can see how the stamp um, it really it's you have Tashlech and you have somebody with the um, on, on Yom Kippur and Shavuot and Tashlich. And this is what stamps do. It's so relevant and it's, uh, it captures the imagination. And it really, it's, it's a real pity that today it's not being used as much as it was in the past. And emails have actually taken over. But when you look at a stamp from a country, it tells you so much about what the country is and the history of the country and the culture of the country. And um, I had the great honor, and it's thanks to Larry that I met the design of the stamp, Aaron Shebo. He designed these three stamps. And um, he also designed the Jerusalem of Gold. Those were the stamps that I gave to the, 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 um, the children in, in uh, Bandung. That stamps have, it, it really, it, it's, it, 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 when you look at a stamp from a country, it's like being an ambassador for that country because it tells you so much about what the country is, what it commemorates, and, and what it stands for. So I'm going to stop the sharing, the screen share, um, and I want to just play. At the, at the international exhibition, they gave us a... Um, um, they gave us... It's called a anklung. It's a musical instrument made of, bang dung, uh, made of bamboo. And if you just hold it, it's so, it's so lovely. It's got the, and you hear the sound in many, many places. It's just such a beautiful sound. Just by moving this, uh, it's made of bamboo and it was given to us as a gift. And it just, it's such a lovely reminder of the sounds of Indonesia. And, um, they also gave me a, um, a memento from, um, from Indonesia 
this is the stamp that you use for cancellations. So they gave this to us at the award ceremonies. And um, what can I say? It's, it's been such a journey and such a tremendous honor and privilege to uh, represent one's country and in a way one's people as well. Because by wearing a yarmulke and saying you're from Israel, people who were remotely connected to anything about Judaism or Israel would come up to you and they would speak to you openly. And um, the, the friendships that my wife and I have made are, are unbelievable because uh, I communicate with so many WhatsApps and emails with, with people all over the world. And I'm extremely grateful to the Israeli Philatelic Federation for giving me the opportunity to represent Israel at these exhibitions. So, um, Lol, I want to thank you. And uh, it's been uh, really also a tremendous honor and privilege to appear on the Rutan branch and to be associated with the Rutan branch. And I want to thank our listeners and our viewers. And uh, if there's any questions or any comments, uh, please feel free.